What is up YouTube? Making fishing vlogs is not very hard. To be quite frank, it's actually fairly easy. The hardest part is getting started and today we're gonna talk about that and how you can start your own fishing channel or just start vlogging in general. Start your own channel around any subject you have fun with. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Dude, I don't know. I think it's a fish. Guys, I just got done fishing with Lunkers TV yesterday. We always have a blast when we get together. We caught some good fish and you're gonna see them in today's video, but I also wanna talk about how I film it and all the gear I use and what you might need to get started. So let's talk about it a little bit. My recommendations, first of all, is just to get started. I hear people asking me all the time, what do I need to do to start my channel? The first thing you need to do is make your first video. In fact, you need to make a lot of them. And so that is my first take. You have a camera already. You're watching this on something that you can probably use as the camera. Whether it's your computer and you're talking about the selfie camera right here that you can use to make tutorial videos. Whether it's your cell phone that you can use on selfie mode to go ahead and do your intros or even film fish catches on a tripod. Whether it's a GoPro, which I think is number one for fishing vlogs if you can spend a little bit of money. And I mean any GoPro. I mean like four, five, six, seven, eight, Maybe if you have a three or below, it's time to upgrade, but just find the cheapest. My recommendation is the cheapest camera. You don't need what I'm using here, although I'm going to link it below. I'm gonna show you what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Devin and I have a Hero 5 and a Hero 6. Probably soon to upgrade to the 8s with this new media mod kit that's coming out that can improve the audio, but we're not gonna talk about that just yet. I wanna show you how simple this can be. Let's go ahead and show you the gear. Okay guys, so for me, gear should be the least of your worries. It should literally be so simple. I want you to start making videos. In fact, drop down in the comments below what the hardest part is for you on getting started to begin with. Like, why are we even having this conversation? Obviously, I'm gonna be sharing what I think works best. This is Red, by the way. He's very loud. Yeah, we see you. This is Zeke over here. That's Zeke. Otis is over there in his bed. And now we're back to the video. I've got the GoPro Hero 6 right here. We also have a Hero 5. Uh, and then we have a chest mount. I think this is just, you have to have it if you're doing fishing content like I am here. An SD card, I highly recommend the 128 gig card. It's gonna allow you to have four hours of the highest resolution footage on most of these GoPros. Four hours is oftentimes plenty, but I will show you towards the end of the video my favorite GoPro settings to maximize your card space. And you can actually get away with fishing a full day on a 128 gig card. Eight hours of fishing, most likely no problem. You'll still have room on your card and I'm gonna share that with you. A lot of these SD cards, you actually, they come with an adapter these days. So you can put the SD card inside of the adapter and then you can either use that in your card reader on your computer to upload the footage onto iMovie is what I use. It's around here somewhere, iMovie. So you can either use that or I've even, until 8,000 subscribers, I edited everything on my iPhone. And how I did that was I, I take the SD card out of the GoPro, I put it into the adapter, and then I use this right here. This is the Apple SD card reader. Uh, it plugs right into your phone, and you literally upload all your video right to your camera roll. Now, if you're shooting tons of footage, obviously you might fill your phone up. I had a little system down where I would always delete my vlogs one at a time after I made them, and I would uh, just edit all my videos on my phone. So if you edit on your phone or a computer, just get it done and start posting videos. Now these batteries, let's say you are out for a while. For me, what I do is I use these Wasabi batteries. I will link these below, I will link the cards below. You can get them for cheap. These, these 128 gig cards go for like in the $20 range, I believe on Amazon these days. The GoPros are cheap. I would just literally buy one off of Craigslist or eBay. Like, don't even go and buy a brand new one if you don't have to, just get freaking started. These Wasabi brand batteries last just as long as the GoPro batteries, plus you can buy them with this triple charger. And so literally, you know, you'll have four batteries by that time most likely, because you'll have the GoPro battery that you bought with it. Then you'll have have these three extras. You could even double up and go six batteries if you're really wanting to go all day, or you could even bring a portable charger with you. And what I do is as I'm using my first few batteries, I might put my portable charger right here and plug this in while I'm out on the water. And I might be charging my extra batteries while I'm using the last one or the last couple batteries. So just no excuses, just get it done, right? I mean, there's, there's other ways to do it. You can straight up plug in a portable charger. You can leave it in your pocket and stream it up to the GoPro. That's what John B does in a lot of cases and he never switches batteries. But I still do the battery thing. I think it's just fine. Uh, 
um, whatever gets the job done, right? Start making content. Next up, for me in the beginning, I believe it's very powerful only using one camera. So powerful because the thing is, you're just getting started. You don't need to know all the ins and outs. You don't need to know, I believe you should not be looking into aperture and what's gonna create the best depth of field. I believe you should not be looking into shutter speed and what's gonna get the slow motion shots. How am I gonna make these better edits? You literally need to post crappy videos and you need to improve as you edit more and more and more and you will, but you're not gonna do it if it's overcomplicated right off the bat. So, start with just a GoPro is my recommendation. Click the thing on, film your intro, what's up guys, it's me, uh, blah blah blah, fishing at this pond, do your little intro, tell your story, or maybe you suck at telling a story. Don't even tell a story. Just put it right onto your chest, start filming, and maybe talk about uh, the lures you're using. Maybe you have no knowledge of lures, like I did in the beginning, and you're scared to talk about what you're using. Then don't, just catch fish. Maybe explain something about the weather. Maybe don't talk at all, but you'll get better at it as you go, and that is the main key here. So I just wanna encourage you to get that GoPro, toss it on the chest mount, grab your rod and reels, or film whatever content it is you want to film, and start uploading. Real quickly to expand on that piece right there, I would have your GoPro in the chest mount at all times just to simplify things. So you could turn it on, film your intro, etc., or talk about when you go from one pond to another, just, you know, add, add to the story that way. But then just go ahead and strap it right back on your chest and then you're fishing. And key point, I always leave it tilted all the way up. I don't have it tilted down or angled down at all unless I'm fishing off of like a bridge or a ledge, in which case I tilt it just a little bit to where I can see the screen and know that I'm getting everything I want in frame. Otherwise, you'll end up missing a lot of stuff when you talk about lures and things of that nature because it's angled down. So I always leave the GoPro faced all the way up and then I crank it tight. So I would just unstrap it, take it off, do my talking pieces, third person stuff. It adds a little bit to the vlogs, my opinion. And then I would put it right back on the chest and get to fishing. Maybe you catch a fish. After you catch that fish, I would take it off and I would maybe hold the fish and talk about Okay, I caught this one on the chatterbait. I caught this one on the Texas rig. Give a little insight as to what happened and etc. And then boom, put it right back on the chest, get that release. Or maybe you get the release holding it close to the water. You just do your thing. I'm just trying to show you the ins and outs, little tips and tricks, and we're just about to get to these settings that are gonna save your ass on the water, trust me when filming on the GoPro. With all that being said, let's go ahead and take the SD card out of the GoPro I used yesterday fishing with Lunkers TV. Let's now put it inside of the adapter, right? Boom. Now this is ready to get plugged into my computer. Here, let's open iMovie. I am plugging my GoPro into the computer. And here, in a semi-reasonable amount of time, we should be able to see the footage here. It's starting to uh, develop the thumbnails from the video, and I need to import from start to finish. Okay, so we've got it all pulled up, and I'm going to import this stuff into iMovie. Boom importing all the clips from yesterday. Let's go ahead and get on to the next step. Now with some of these clips actually being imported and once they are finalized, I'm gonna go ahead and start a new project, which is what it's called when you kind of make a new video on iMovie. And I'm going to space some of these clips out on the timeline and we'll end up watching some of this footage of us fishing yesterday. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this and I'm gonna cut in and out on this camera, giving you more and more tips as we go along. And again, at the end of the video, sharing some of my top tips on GoPro settings to maximize your card space and make your edit editing easier towards the end of the video. And we're closing in, almost imported. Boom, import complete. So let's go ahead and go to projects and we are going to start a new project, a movie. And uh, now we have our timeline down here that we can add the clips from the GoPro or the main camera, which I'm using now, and I will be putting on this timeline. And we are gonna, oh, this timeline, the mouse was in the wrong place. And we are gonna start editing. I'm going to just go ahead and select all the GoPro footage and I'm going to put this on the timeline. But I have my second folder, which is the clips from the Sony, which I'm using now, or my bigger camera, because I use two cameras and do not recommend that off the start once again. And uh, so now I have these clips, which I will add in where necessary onto the timeline. So let's go ahead and start doing a little bit of editing off of my two SD cards that I have imported onto the computer now, and I'm going to start adding, making my cuts, adding the intro, etc., and really show you guys the behind the scenes on editing a fishing video. It's very simple, it's very simple. You can pretty much make cuts and you're golden. Guys, so alternatively, if you wanna edit on your phone using the iMovie app here, here's how I do it. I go ahead and I use the same SD card with all the clips I already put onto the computer. I'm gonna plug that into the Apple SD card reader. Boom, plug that into the iPhone. Once that's plugged in, you go to your camera roll, and now there's this extra option that says import. 
pretty sweet. So you're importing the clips that are on your SD card and I want to go ahead and select all the clips. I'm not going to select all the clips, I just want to show you the process behind it. So let's go ahead and hit the select button and we want to just select a few, a few clips and we will hit import and we just want to import the selected. In your case, you may hit import all because you might be importing every clip that you filmed on the GoPro that day. So we'll just import a few. It shows the process here. They're gonna go straight to your camera roll and then be ready to edit on iMovie within your phone. Super easy. If you're using an Android or another phone, I'm sure there's a way to do the same process. You're gonna to have to Google it, figure it out. And I can help you with that in the comments down below. Let's go ahead and show you the next step. So now it shows import complete and you can choose whether you want to keep those clips on the card or delete them. I usually just hit keep and then I might format the card on the GoPro before I use it the next time. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just hit keep and then I'm going to exit out of that import and I'm going to now take this apart and then you'll see if I go to photos and I go to my camera roll, now I have these clips inside of my actual camera roll on my iPhone. This footage you can tell is a little bit different. It's kayaking. This isn't the Lunkers TV footage. I guess I grabbed the, the wrong clips, but the idea is the same. We'll open up iMovie. We're going to start a new movie and we are now looking at our camera roll and what clips we want to import. So what I do is uh, it's showing me all of the stuff in my camera roll. So I would go and hit media and I just want to look at the video, specifically the recently added video. Once you find the clips, you can go ahead and you can select them and you can add them in the order you choose. So let's add these kayak clips and then we hit create movie. So in your case, you would add every single clip that you filmed that day. And now you have your timeline within the iMovie app. And so now all you do is you scroll through, you can make your cuts, you can do everything we're about to do on the computer just within your phone. And so this is a video of Devin and me kayak fishing and uh, it doesn't pertain to this video. So let's go ahead and get back to the computer. Uh, for YouTube, yeah. Okay, we have moved the operation into the office because Devin is here and with her mom, they are actually gonna be cooking some lunch. Once you have all of your clips on the timeline here, it becomes very simple to identify by scrolling and you'll probably hear, we can turn up the volume, you'll hear the audio. And so for me, what I often do is I just skim through with the mouse over until I find a clip that I wanna use. Boom, I'm just gonna include a little bit of action, us getting on the boat. So I'm gonna split that clip right here using the split button. And then I don't think that anything else interesting happens for a minute. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, you know what? I'm getting a rod. I'm showing me get the first rod. So I'll split the clip right there and I'll get rid of all this stuff in the middle by deleting it. Now, all I'm showing is, boom. Yep, we're getting started. Let's go ahead and grab the first rod. This is too much. Not enough of this is needed in my opinion. So I'm going to scroll over and I only want to show me picking up the rod. Just boom, delete that. Two and a half seconds of unwanted video is what I just deleted in my opinion. So boom. Boom, I'm gonna just include that. Me picking up the first rod on reel and I'm gonna start throwing. Lunkers is doing his intro right now, talking about mystery tackle box. I already get to fishing. So what I do is I just skim through these minute long clips and I delete them one at a time as I'm figuring out which content I want to just leave in the timeline for the video. You can see the audio waves. Anytime I see a spike, I'm probably talking or something interesting might be happening. And so I always skim and I listen for the audio. So I say something there, so I'll play that. Yeah, I, I just grabbed the whole deal. I just, so I say something that's completely useless. I'm not gonna use this clip. So I just delete it. And then I go through and I do it until I have my video completely finished with all the clips just how I want it. Adding music is secondary, but it's definitely an option. So for me, I have this folder called outro and music. You guys know my outro. So I made that in the past and I just add that straight to the end of the video. And then I also have no copyright music that I use a lot. You've heard this in many of my tutorial, you've heard this song in many of my tutorial videos. So what I did is I used a YouTube downloader on my iPhone to download this video from YouTube. And then what I did is I airdropped it to my computer and then boom, now it is this music video. And all you have to do is drag it under your video on your timeline and you'll see all it does is it brings the music in. So now I have the music from that video underneath my uh, uh, visuals. So let's play it. But it's gonna be way too loud. It's at 100% volume, so watch this. You wouldn't even be able to hear me talk. So I usually dim it way down to just a few percent. So now the music is much lower. 
Now the music is just in the background and you can hear me talking and saying my stuff. And if I have a segment where I want it to just be B-roll and extra footage and increase the volume, I can do that. But I don't want you to focus on even music really in the beginning at all. You just need to focus on the video and you can add music later. I'm just telling you how I do it in case you are interested. Guys, I had to get on over to work, but I'm gonna work on this edit a little bit more. And then let's go ahead and just take a peek at it. I'm gonna make it shorter than normal because I want you guys to really uh, take in as much tutorial as possible. So let me just show you guys the highlights of Lunkers TV and myself fishing the other day and finish this thing. But stick around for those GoPro settings. I think it's gonna make all the difference. Hint, it has to do with loop mode. You're gonna love it. Yep. Right here, y'all, sun's just coming up over the horizon. Make sure to take off your shoes before you step on this bad boy. This is, this is new carpet, plush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you kind of pop it a few times or do you just like uh, raise the tip smoothly? I went, I, I'd never seen, I guess almost a lure fish like this whenever I watched you in uh, One Rod's video. Couple hours in, y'all, I gotta say, man. This boat's pretty. I haven't had any bites. I just fixed a backlash from my last outing. I think I, I must be throwing the wrong thing because Lunkers is using it and catching him and I'm throwing it and not catching him. So I'm just going to switch things up. Good news, there is fish in this lake though. So I'm going to try and find him. Greg Seaward. Might be it. Okay. Yo. Yeah, first one of the day. All right. God dang. All it takes is Rob on the phone for some good luck. Okay, it's it's been about three hours. I'm over here with the first one on the crack and crawl. I've thrown everything except the kitchen sink. And uh, you know what? We are on to something, ladies and gents. Texas rig ripping through the grass right here. Gets the uh, yeah ripping. <laughs> Rob, I stand corrected. Slowly falling. <laughs> Slowly falling is what they like this morning, uh, apparently. You know, it's probably afternoon at this point. I really don't know. I'd get a picture with this kid, but I don't really care. And if I could get him off the hook, I'd put him back in the water. There we go. All right. It's been fun. Little guy, huh? Oh, don't worry. I'll get him. I'll get him. I'll get him. I got two. All right. There we go. I think he's, I think he's tiny. <laughs> wow. I am raking up the poundage. Ladies and gents, the big girls love the crack and crawl today. Dude, I don't know. I think it's a fish. Watch yourself now. <laughs> hey, I might have caught myself a little two pounder. I'm just gonna try and bump him up here. <laughs> oh, golly. Yeah, he hammered it as soon as it hit the water, dude. He just, yeah. Okay, there we go. Well, there we go, guys. Finally got my confidence bait bite right there. That's the clutch, baby. You already know the deal. You've seen it a few times on the channel. Today we get to fish with old Lunkers TV. I get to use these green Guggen uh, pliers I never used before. Check these puppies out. These are flashy. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Wrapping things up over here, guys. I'm just skimming through a little bit more of the footage and I want to show you guys something. So this is as far as I've made it on the edit. And I just skimmed through all this footage here and I got all the way to the next clip where I actually catch a fish. And so I'm just gonna show you what I do to kind of get rid of all those clips in between. I've edited this far. Now if I click this clip and then I scroll over to where I know the next highlight is, I can hit shift and click the mouse pad and it selects all the clips in between the one that I selected here and selected at the end. So now I can just delete all those. And now it's right from where I have finished off editing to this next clip where there's another highlight and I end up catching the next fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump back in. We're about finished here, and I'm gonna get this thing uploaded for you guys. Oh, got something small. Okay, that'll be a double. No, that's, that's the Mick double, that's the big one. Oh, wow, he's huge. Oh, got a screaming drag. Tiny, 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 let me go ahead and do this. Got one. Snow. But we'll take him. 
when you've never got bass out of the live well before. I'm trying to show you guys my biggest catches of the day. Rawr. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. These are my two biggest bass of the day, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go ahead and get the release on this one to end, but I had a bunch of fun fishing with Lunkers TV today. He put me on some hogs that I knew like I've never fished with rods I've barely ever used on a boat I've never been on with a guy who got stranded on the boat last time he was out with his wife. So, and a uh, well you've never in a live well I've never taken fish out of. So a lot of new experiences today. Let's go ahead and close this thing out. Get these puppies back in the water. Oh yeah. All right, y'all, that wraps it up. It's about to get busy at the restaurant. Please share this video if it's helped you and could help them out as well with their videos. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys loop mode now. You've all been waiting for it. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, guys, we're now on the iPhone 11 Pro for the final segment of this video because I forgot to bring an extra SD card to work. So I'm using the one from the big camera and the GoPro now. I'm gonna show you guys my GoPro settings and what's gonna save you on cart space and help you with your editing. Find a, find a place with a little less noise. First things first, I never use this button here. I always use the side button to turn the GoPro on. Once the GoPro's turned on, you'll see the settings. I always run 4K resolution just to maximize it. Since it's capturing so much, I want it to be the highest quality. I also use 24 frames a second. It makes editing easier when you're newer. Uh, if you wanna do things like slow motion video, etc., then you can bump it up to 120 frames a second, but that's not important for this video. That is down the road. 24 frames a second is gonna be the easiest for you. Also, the field of view, I leave on super view. I want it to be as wide as possible, and you do as well. You want the widest view on your GoPro 100%. But this is absolutely the secret right here. Hit the video icon, boom. And you want to use loop mode. You want to be on looping. And you can set this up in your settings. Right here now, it shows an interval. The interval is five minutes. It's the best for fishing videos. You can set different intervals. Five is the best. So here's what's gonna happen if you set it on a five minute interval. It shows an hour worth of card space on this card, but I can make this last multiple hours and I'll show you how. So the camera's on, I'm on loop mode, and I start recording. Now the timer's gonna go up to five minutes, and then I'm gonna have to show you guys what happens. Okay guys, it's starting to get busy at Valet, so I gotta make this fast. Look at this, watch this. It's 4.56, this is where it gets crazy. Five minutes, and then it stops. And then it stops. This is what is so brilliant. Okay, so what's happening here? It's on a five minute interval loop. So what's happening is the GoPro is now, it could be on my chest and I might catch my first fish after one hour of fishing, let's say. It's only gonna hold on to the last five minutes worth of footage. So all you have to do is continuously be fishing and you're literally only using five minutes worth of your card instead of potentially hours. So let's say, let's say I've been filming for a long time now and I get my first fish on. This is still rolling, right? I get the fish on, I catch it. Maybe I even talk about the fish catch and then I release it. That's gonna take less than five minutes, much less. So all you have to do now to save that last five minutes, see, five minutes. Let's say I just finished my release. All I have to do is hit the top button and now that clip is saved and I still have 51 minutes on this card. Even if I've been fishing for two hours, just letting it roll nonstop. So that is the key there, you guys. It's gonna save you so much card space. It only uses five minutes at a time. But what's gonna happen is it's gonna save you so much card space, you might only need to hit that save button here and there, and then you start recording again. Let's say I start another clip now, and something happens before five minutes. Like, I talk about a transition to another pond, or I make another catch very quickly. Now, all I have to do is uh, stop it, and boom, it saves that portion. So you don't have to worry about that. Then you just start a new clip, and it's just gonna continually keep going to five minutes. Now here's where it's bad, and it's only bad for one reason really, is that if you don't save the clip after you catch your fish or do whatever is important, then it won't save the last five minutes. It's gonna keep rolling over. So make sure every time you catch a fish or tell something important or give a tip, etc., you then save the clip and start a new one. And that's that. It's super simplistic. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've literally had days fishing where I'm out for five, six hours consistently, and I've only used two or three hours of card space because of this technique. I hope you guys like that loop mode. Definitely use it. It is weird how it breaks up the clips. It breaks the clips up into one minute intervals, which means instead of having like four hours worth of 10 or 20 minute clips from your GoPro that you import, now you're only gonna have like an hour or two hours, but it's only gonna be the highlights and the benefit of that, of course, is it speaks for itself. But the downside is it's gonna break it into one minute clips. I don't know why it does that, but I don't, I don't care. 
Now I only have like one hour's worth of footage to sift through. And so breaking it up into those one minute clips, I just import 60 clips into iMovie instead of like five clips or 10 clips. So it makes no difference to me. I wanna see you guys making more content. One of the newer videos I'm gonna make here shortly is gonna be how to now upload your videos to YouTube and start your channel. But I think this is more than enough to get you guys started. Start creating, the rest of it's easy. Google how to start your channel and let's get this thing rolling like the GoPro on loop mode, baby. That is the way to go, I promise you that. Then when you're finished uh, finally doing all your recording, you just hold that side button and turn it off. So once again, I never use this button on here just to turn it on and start recording because then it doesn't go into loop mode. You have, to, you have to put the camera on loop mode every time you turn the GoPro on, which is why I always use the side button to start it and then set it to loop mode and it's gonna stay on your five minute interval setting. Uh, so I gotta go help Macy park these cars. We're getting busy over here, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Appreciate you, peace out.